Hey guys, do any of you remember the NES? Anyone? NES? Come on, just raise your hand, don't be shy. A lot of you. And I just made you raise your hand to a computer screen. Ha! But in all seriousness, it was the most popular console of the late 80s and no other company was even able to scratch its sales. I mean, look at Sega and the Master System. Yeah, I'm not gonna say that I'm a big fan of the Master System, but it was good, but just not an ES level. So, Sega tried again in the summer of 1988, and this is what happened. Genesis Dutch! 16-bit arcade graphics. You can't do this on Nintendo! Genesis Dutch! What Nintendo? So what does this commercial mean exactly? Well, for me to answer this question, I'm gonna refer to this game. Altered Beast. Whenever companies tried to port their games from the arcade to the NES, the result wasn't exactly a pixel-to-pixel -pixel perfect translation. Take the Ninja Turtles arcade game, a game that's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but... Ah, it doesn't look exactly like the arcade, does it? However, let's look at Elder Beast with the Genesis compared to the original arcade, and wow! The two are almost similar! I say almost because, come on, let's be honest. The arcade original does look better, but it's a really close race, and I would even argue that this version plays much better than the arcade game, and that's the main reason why the Genesis was pretty popular in its initial release. It was able to do something that Nintendo wasn't able to do, give us arcade perfect experiences. No longer we have to beg our parents to drive us with Chuck E. Cheese or, I don't know, an arcade or some bowling alley, just buy a system, get a game, plug it in and just have fun. But I'm just wondering, did Alter Beast really age well after all those years? Well, this is why I'm making this video, so let's find out. The game starts immediately as our hero is resurrected by God, yes, God, to save his daughter from the clutches of evil. However, even though there are cutscenes in the game, despite how old this game is, they don't really tell the story very well, and that purple background is really stale. Altered Beast is a side-scrolling beat-em-up that is constantly scrolling. There is little to no platforming, as most of the time you punch evil creatures in the face. Uh, assuming they're evil, maybe they're just two days away from retirement from what we know. Also, as you can tell, you can play this game with a friend, and that's always a plus. Unless you're called Battletoads. Being a beat-em-up game, you can punch, kick, and jump. And you can even perform some of those actions while crouching. It's possible to do a higher job by holding the up button as you jump. Something I wish I knew earlier due to the sudden platforming segment in level 3. But even with a higher jump, jumping in Altered Beast feels really awkward due to the fact that jumping in a very small arc that doesn't let you get that much distance. Granted, it's not a platformer, so it's not that big of an issue, but when it comes to attacking airborne enemies, it can become rather annoying more than it should. But the core of the game is obviously the beastly transformations. By kicking the twilight out of those white wolves, they spout orbs that grant powers. The more collected, the more buff the characters become, echoing what might be one of the most iconic sounds of all gaming. Power up! Gather three of those orbs, and your character transforms into a variety of beasts. The wolf is perhaps the most iconic of those beasts, and up until a very late point of my life, I thought it was the only form since it was the one on the cover. It shoots fire as well as death charge at enemies. The dragon can fly, shoot laser beams, and blanca itself up so it can have its own electrical field. Accompanied by the most delightful ear-scratching sound in your life. <laughs> The Tiger, while not the most memorable transformation, is functional with its vertical tash attack, as well as that cool projectile goes in and out of the screen, which is impressive for its time. Ugh, but alas, we also have this. Can someone tell me what in the Banjo Kazooie is this thing? Yes, I know it's a bear, but it doesn't belong to the rest of the mythology of the game. It doesn't look like any of the creatures. Now it does have a cool spin jump and also stone breath for some reason, but it doesn't belong. The moment you see this screen come up, the game loses all of its credibility. And do I even have to talk about the walk cycle of this thing? Look for the bare necessity, the simple bare necessity. Forget about your worries and your strife. 
There are five bosses in the game, and while they look very cool, they're not made from the stuff of legends. Just go to them, spam the attack button, and win. Also, can someone tell me what this thing is? Is that a flying gibble? Surprisingly enough, it is the hardest boss of the game because it doesn't inflict the most damage, but the rest of the bosses can be easily abused. The spite all that, Altered Beast is not what I would call an easy game, considering the fact that blinking time can be very short and the second boss can shred your health like a cheese grater. When all life is gone, it's game over and back to the main screen. No continues whatsoever. And yes, there are cheats available that allow multiple extra hits or difficulty options, but the point is that it should be available in the menu, not as a cheat. I can see why level select should be locked under a code, that makes sense, but why the other options? Why do I need to hold the button and press start to continue where I died? And this isn't the arcade game anymore, this is a full-fledged retail game that costs close to what we pay nowadays for AAA titles. And I understand that the game is short, that's fine, but there's a way to make it fair without causing kids to be frustrated with it. The last thing I want to touch upon is that if you don't collect all the three orbs and transform into a beast before you encounter the boss, the level repeats itself over and over again until you actually get all the orbs necessary. It just makes the game more tedious than it already is. Allard Beast really shows the power of the Sega Genesis and how superior it is when it comes to porting the arcade classic. Despite not looking as vibrant as the arcade, it looks really nice with bright colors and some really neat monster designs. Some might show up in a future Sega game, who knows? The soundtrack, however, is rather dull, and I do not blame the Sega Genesis chip for doing that, but the melodies themselves are rather dull. But the game does get major credit for those awesome voices. Welcome to your doom. And with all that said and done, let's move on to the final cut. On the positive side, even though this game was ported from the arcade, it looks phenomenal considering the hardware limitations. The different transformations that you get to use in the game are pretty cool. And the game has co-op, do I need to say more? On the negative side, despite the fact they're more responsive than the arcade version, I didn't like the controls too much, they felt clunky to me. The fact you need to use a cheat in order to continue the game is kind of a dodo decision. The music is rather meh. And lastly, what the hell is that bear doing there? Overall, Altered Beast is an important game to Sega's lineage, and a clear testament of how great their marketing campaign was by showing us that it can take arcade-like experiences to home consoles, which was extremely admirable. But the frustrating elements, the clunky controls, the generic music, prove that being innovative doesn't mean anything today if your game doesn't play as well. So I would only recommend this game to the utmost Genesis enthusiasts, but for the rest, it's a skip. But it does make me wonder, do I have a beastly transformation? Well, there's only one way to find that out! Power up! Uh... Oh. Crap. Thank you very much for watching the review, guys, and I want to give a special shout out to my friend Gustavo who helped me catch the footage of this game. So, as you can tell, there wasn't a score at the end of this video because I'm trying to test the waters to see if scores actually fit this kind of format. Let me know what you think in the comments. If I were to rate this game, probably something around the 5 out of 10 range, I would imagine. Also, if you want some more dosage of Altered Beast, there's also a cool video by Sega Channel if you want to check what he thinks, along with Retro Liberty, about this classic game. Like, subscribe, click on links and stuff, and I hope you all enjoyed. As always, take care.